Hey guys, uh, this week we're going to be looking at a special release of Ravel's A6E Intruder Kit for the movie uh, Flight of an Intruder. Let's open up this fairly <laughs> large kit. Now, despite being a 148th scale, it's still, um, you can tell from the size of the box, it's a fairly large aircraft. Ah. Yeah, and definitely not the easiest to open up. Okay, so let's get into her. So, right out the gate from this uh, first spur, we can see overall size and layer detailing that is in this kit. Now, one thing to note. And I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but it is a, a kit, kit that does have raised detailing, which is unfortunate, but given the age, understandable. Uh, beyond, with the exception of the, this detailing, is it's all right, but I wouldn't say it's the best. Um, the detailing in the kit is nice. The detail. The um, various bits and bobs are nicely represented. Excuse me. Um, for the age of the kit, um, things such as the crew boarding layer are nicely done, as well as the uh, air brake bay. Um, another nice thing I noticed about this kit, and is something potentially you might look at for kit bashing, is the uh, separation line for the wing folds here on the wings here on the underside and again here on the upper side are very sharp and nicely done or excuse me upper side and lower side forgive me and if you do choose to uh, put a aftermarket wing fold set on this thing it would be nice very easily done considering you, know, you can very clearly see where you need to cut and won't cause too much difficulty. Uh, continuing on, uh, we have our of our main gear bays, which again, much the same, is nicely detailed. But as I said, overall the smaller raised details on the surface are not that great. Mm. Excuse me. Uh, continuing on, uh, we have our cockpit tub, which again, for the age is all right. It would be nice if these uh, seat bottoms were separate, make it easier to paint, but it is what it is. Sorry, I'm having to adjust my positioning. Uh, uh, we also have, strangely enough, a large anti ship missile um, blanking on which particular missile it is offhand. Um, I do find it odd that it's included on this kit, just because I you don't typically see the A6 carrying anti-ship missiles. You typically see it in ground attack roll. So it's an interesting inclusion, but just something I thought I'd point out. Uh, continuing on to the instrument panel, the detailing is uh, typical of Ravel in this period. Um, detail is not that great. I would say definitely look at maybe going aftermarket route. Uh, continuing on, we have our instrument shroud, which is nice, as well as our the back head burst area. Uh, also in this sprue are our landing gear, which are nicely detailed and representative. Uh, we also have some sway braces. The main gear wheels as well as a couple of fuel tanks uh, center line and on the wings mm. now next sprue we have basically all of our weapons but we also have this uh, one center part for the underside which has our uh, mount for the center line tank as well as our nose gear bay uh, this is one of the 
oddest design uh, choices I've ever seen on a kit. Um, just something I've never seen, to be honest. Um, the detail is good, as you can see here on the sides of the gear bay. But beyond that, it's just an odd choice. I do get two pilot figures. One's unfortunately fallen off the sprue, which given kits probably close to 30 years old, it's not surprising something like that's happened. Um, we also have our tricks and seats, which are, again, passable. Uh, another thing I just noticed, unfortunately, is we do have a second uh, instrument panel. Uh, most likely, they probably just reuse the sprue for an EA 6B version. I believe that looks like the um, second backseat uh, control panel offhand. I could be wrong. No. Need to obviously double check the references on that, but it does include that. Um, now, this is where this kit really is a letdown, is in the armament. Now, while you do get a nice assortment and the clusters are nice re represented, however, the snake eyes are not. Uh, they're really undersized. And I would say definitely look at uh, picking up Hasegawa's um, weapon. And set A, I believe, is for the bombs in 148, and using those is that those will uh, do a better job of representing the ordnance. Um, you do get four uh, multi ejector racks, which is a nice inclusion, and those are actually fairly decently done. So I would say keep the, the racks, but go with aftermarket bombs. Last up, as far as sprues go, we have our clear parts. Uh, this is where they actually did do a decent job, as uh, I see no real deformities in the casting of, of uh, canopies, and with the exception of this little bit of flash here, uh, the front windscreen is nicely done. So overall, the clear parts are nice saving grace of this kit. Now, because this is an older kit, um, the decals have yellowed some with age, uh, but you do get markings for a single squadron and two different aircraft, uh, one for the uh, commander's aircraft. Uh, I can't remember the actor's name right now. <laughs> uh, God. Ah, I'm blanking on it, but his and the title the main character's aircraft, uh, as well as the name uh, plates for them. Uh, overall, you know, had this been new, I would say definitely the decals are in great shape, all things considered. Um, but as I said, they have yellowed some, although not too terribly badly. Um, mostly see it here on this side of the decal sheet. Uh, National Insignia has a little bit yellowing to the white, but it's, I would say it's still passable. I mean, uh, I would say, unless you've got an extra, say, national insignia, insignia is laying around, you can probably get away with using one in the kit. Again, this is just my copy. So let's move on to the instructions sheet. Uh, assembly starts in cockpit. Um, Overall, it's if you built one Ravel kit, you can probably get through this one. Um, albeit, this one does has a decent number of little added steps, especially with getting this in. Is that? Yeah. Let me move this over. So getting that um, underside section is going to be an absolute bear. Um, trying to think best way to modify it, maybe to make it a little little easier but uh, yeah their choice to do it that way I think is a major misstep is going to represent a major headache point so that's something to be aware of oh yeah I almost forgot to, as they had fallen off the sprue our, our little inlet have parts 
and that knows those instructions. Sorry about that. Um, Git also does include a little clear and to help keep it from nose sitting, but I would say just chuck a bunch of um, weights into the nose. It's big enough that that should not be an issue. I mean, it's got a big enough nose that <laughs> if you're still tail sitting, uh, you've got problems. Uh, overall, though, um, it's pretty st basic assembly, albeit there's a decent number of steps involved. Um, fortunately, L does tend to, I would say, overcomplicate their instruction sheets a little, so it does seem a little more daunting. I think some of this is just to uh, save space, but overall, it should go together fairly easily. Um, once you do get a belt, uh, you do technically only have one paint scheme, albeit for a uh, different aircraft in a single squadron. So overall, um, now this kit's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, obviously, given its age, um, some things are to be expected to be problematic and have some teething issues, but overall, I would say this is a pass or skip. It, it's one of those kits that, you know, if you're a fan of the movie, definitely pick it up. If you're just looking for a general A6 kit, I would say pass. Uh, there are better options out there, especially nowadays, because um, at the time I got this kit, um, there really weren't any options for A6s in 148 scale. This was, I want to say, about 10, 15 years ago when I did get this kit. Since then, uh, I know Kinect has come out with their A6 line. Uh, beyond that, though, I can't think of anyone offhand who is doing an A6 kit. But just even then, having one regularly available uh, is a nice thing to have. So because of that, I would say unless you're getting it to build it for this version, um, this is, gets a pass. Now, unfortunately, the issues it does have, I would say, aren't worth the admission price. Um, so, yeah, that was a look at uh, Ravel's uh, 148th scale A6E intruder uh, in workings for film Flight of the Intruder. Uh, an older kit that, if you're just going to build an A6, is probably not the best bet. But if you're fan of the movie, I would say definitely consider uh, getting it. So, until next time.